All right, I'd like to call the, to order the, um, uh, this meeting of the county commissioners. Um, we did have a forum here tonight. Everyone's here, so I appreciate your attendance. Uh, first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance and Invocation. If you will, please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, the opportunity for us to gather here tonight. God, we ask for you just to place your hand upon our county. Uh, we have so many people that are hurting and uh, county employees that have uh, loss of relatives and, and those that are sick. And we just ask for you to comfort them and, and just be with them during this time. God, we ask for you to be with this body tonight as we um, contemplate the business of Cleveland County. Help us make wise and, and just decisions. We ask the sanction in your name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Next, we'd like to recognize any elected officials that are here tonight. Any elected officials here? Next item is uh, recognition of the veterans. Any veterans that are here, if you'll please stand up for us tonight. We'd appreciate it. So we can recognize you. service. Uh, department heads, would you please um, stand up and identify yourselves so you can be recognized as well. Chris Crane, Tax Administrator. Chris Crane, County Administrator. Joe Lord, Cleveland County United. Thank you for being here tonight. First item on our agenda tonight is uh, the, proposed, or the agenda. Um, is there a motion to adopt the proposed agenda? Second. We've got a first and a second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Citizen recognition. Uh, this is time where um, you can come up and, uh, and state your opinions or, or address the commissioners. Um, we have one person listed on the uh, uh, for citizen recognition tonight. Uh, Mr. Williams, if you'd like to come up. Robert Williams, I live in Austin. Uh, some of you may already know, uh, at the last school board meeting, I uh, got on their citizen recognition and asked them not to join in a lawsuit against the state of North Carolina. But that's not, not, not really what I'm here to talk about tonight. I've also filed a freedom of information request with the school system regarding some of the credit card dealings over the past so many years that it's been so controversial. And I, I received some information that, uh, that uh, was identified in a letter as information that had been sent to the Shelby Star. But the disc itself was marked blank PI request. So I don't know, I don't know what the deal is there, but the information contains some pretty disturbing uh, statistics from what I saw with that sample. It looked like a half a million dollars had been, had been uh, spent on credit card purchases, and uh, about 60 to 70 percent of those charges were questionable. And when I say questionable, I mean certain things like massages at the Grove Park Inn in uh, Asheville. I think it's going to be pretty hard to uh, justify how that's uh, something that should be charged to the to the county, to the school, to the taxpayer. Things like accept a, a large number of meals to country club, a rabbit. What's the school find a rabbit on credit card for? I don't know. A hummingbird feeder, the miscellaneous other things. But if we extrapolate what I what I think is the total number of charges based on some of the other information they had. It looks like over the years they spent like five million bucks credit cards. And if you had to project 60 to 70% of the 
objection, uh, objectionable charges. There's a, a big, a big problem there. It looks like it's a lot bigger than than, uh, than I ever thought. But anyway, also as part of that package, uh, I received a letter basically stating that uh, that uh, the volume of information that I had requested would be like 500,000 pages. And, and it, it looked like they misinterpreted what I'd asked for as being every transaction that the, the school had made for the last seven years. But what I actually asked for was just credit card transactions, which should not be that, that much. Now, what I'm asking you folks to think about is this is the issue that needs to be resolved. Cleveland County commissioners vote to send millions of dollars over the years to the school system. And if there's any waste to that extent out there, it needs to be rooted out. So what I'm asking you to think about is becoming a partner in getting this Freedom of Information Act out, request out and fulfilled and reviewed properly in the petition you bid once and for all. I appreciate your comments, Rob. Okay, thank you. That's all the first we had to sign up tonight. Was there anyone else that, that uh, intended to sign up tonight that didn't have the opportunity to that would like to address the commissioners? All right. Commissioners, the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. And for that, I'll turn it over to our manager, Ed Richardson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. Several items for your consideration. First being the board minutes from the December 17th regular meeting and the January 7th regular meeting. I know you've had an opportunity to look over that and, and certainly here to answer any questions that you may have. Item B, under tax administration, we have the uh, December collection report. And I'm pleased to report that through the month of December, uh, Mr. Chris Green and his staff uh, are reporting 75.09% collection through the month of December for real property. Uh, Mr. Green is here to answer any questions that you may have. Over on the vehicle side, uh, through the month of December, we are at 72.25% respectfully. Next item uh, will be item C, uh, out of Tax Assessor's Office, Tax Abatements and Supplements. Uh, through December of 2013. Uh, nothing extraordinary to report for this month. Uh, board members, I would say that we have abatements uh, for the month of December at $102,853.99. We have supplements uh, at $17,709.12. Item D, out of the Sheriff's Office, we have a budget amendment for your consideration tonight in the amount of $10,400. Uh, that is drug forfeiture, federal forfeiture money that our Sheriff's Office has asked that we be allowed to accept budget. And the use for that, uh, the Sheriff's Office has recently received some new patrol uh, vehicles to bring onto the fleet. And there are some specs that need to be carried out, painting and marking uh, of these vehicles. And that's what that money would be used for. Uh, that's item D. That concludes consent agenda. Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, sir. Um, commissioners, you heard the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? Moved. Second. Thank you, sir. Got a second as well. Turn it to you. Yes. Commissioner Hutchins, second that. <clears throat> Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Next item on the agenda, on our regular agenda, um, is the Walton Springs Rescue Squad. We're honored to have Joe Lord here tonight to discuss that with us. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm here um, to give you a, a quick uh, staff report of what's transpired out on the community of Walton Springs, especially the Walton Springs Rescue. Um, at this point in time, they have dissolved that unit. Uh, we made it pretty much official December 31st of 2013. So with that, uh, they went back into their charter to look and see what was to be taking place with the property and the, the materials that are there at the rescue squad that are left. And in their charter, it states that they would like to have it turned back over to Cleveland County. 
so that's what we're here about tonight. So I've got pretty much everything laid out here, what's going on as far as pros and cons of the building and the property. Um, there's a lot of things going back and forth as far as the exact amount of um, cost of that property and what it's worth tax-wise, and then the condition of the building, and then whether or not we would be able to utilize that for a facility later on in the future. So with the building and property, are there questions or concerns? And I do have Bowen Springs, the last Bowen Springs Rescue Squad chief is here tonight. That's probably all on that. So if you have any questions, we'd be more than happy to address any of them. They got down when we started talking in November, I think it was. Uh, they had one board member who was the treasurer and one squad member, which was the chief. And that's what's, what's the left of that rescue squad. And they turned off all the utilities and stuff several months ago. Commissioners, have any questions for well, I have a question. I guess just comment. Very sad that we're losing because I guess comes along with today's problems that we've got. You know, with the being volunteers, any organization out there has trouble getting volunteers, especially with the training and the certification they need. It makes it that much harder. But we're very fortunate that uh, you know, we put things in place. A few months ago, to start covering this area that there'll be no labs in service for that particular area. And looking at what Joe put together for his dead old property and repair it, we're still way ahead in dollars and cents as far as taking the property. And two, with uh, like, like Joe had talked about, with uh, Bowling Springs considering a new facility for their. Town Hall, we have a unit state there, so it's very possible that this might be exactly what we need to place two state in our hands in the Wall Street area. So it's, I think that uh, it's going to be a good thing. And if you need a motion to do that, then I will make a motion that we accept property, accept Joe's and the county manager's recommendation on how to handle closing this out. Okay, we've got a motion on the board to accept the property. Uh, is there a second? I second. We've got a second. Any other discussion on that? Any other discussion about the item? No? Any money involved in it? The contract. The contract was that if the if the on dissolving the the rescue squad out there, the county would accept that property, and there's no. For us to accept that there's no money involved on our end. There, that is true for the property, and that's true for the building. Um, there's also um, tangibles inside the building. There's an older ambulance, 105,000 miles on it. Um, there are some pieces of equipment and stuff that are inside that building. Um, so those are also going to be included in this as far as what we're taking in. Um, the prices that are listed here are just estimates because of the being quick and don't know everything about that building, but we did have the building inspector out there and the building and stuff. None of this has to be spent tomorrow to fix the building. So currently it's in that state. I mean, there's some things that we would probably want to do right away um, to help shore up and make sure that building is um, maintained the way it is. Um, but other than that, nothing would have to be budgeted out of this year's money. If we were looking to put a station there, then we would go through this normal budget process that we normally do and put the money in there for next year um, to make the place livable and stuff. It does have the um, asbestos, which is common to an older type structure. It's all over the ceilings and stuff, the way they used to use asbestos in the paint. Came back at about 2 to 3%. So that cost just to abate that building and get the asbestos out there was roughly estimated around 15000 So the rest of it is all um, cosmetics or um, some of it is put the generator room on there, try to start the generator, it runs on um, natural gas, and when we went to turn it over, I mean, it was pumping out water. So it's been sitting there for a while, most of the stuff has been, so those are things we'll find later on. But I have a rough estimate here of what I think it would cost to bring that building up to a standard, even if we were to use it as a station. My question would be is, one, you're looking at the equipment and you have looked at it and determined that we could use it and you were willing to pay for the equipment. The 
sick in the building. <clears throat> there could be some liability in it because of problems. You know, we're paying for the building. And third, do we actually even need the building to serve the EMS? I'll answer the first one about the equipment again. We're not paying anything for that equipment if it's part of the property. It's all in that building. So it's all being turned over to us. Now, can can we utilize all the equipment we got in there? Some of it is very old, some of it is very recent. Um, the largest piece of thing in there that most people would be interested in is the education tool. It's got a cutter in there and a spreader. So it costs approximately twenty thousand dollars brand new, estimated somewhere around six or seven thousand for use. As far as the cost, if we were to sell it, gov dot deals or the local. I've got several inquiries from local people like the very Bowling Springs uh, fire department out there is very interested in the tool. So you could literally sell some of that stuff off, just like we sell ambulances and stuff to the city of Shelby. We could sell some of that stuff. And that's all currently, right now, it's all coming with the building as part of the charter. So all that stuff will be turned over for us. So could some of that offset some of the balance of what it's costing us to maybe fix the place up? Most definitely. That answers the first one on equipment close or third question was do we need it? Okay. The it's been seven, eight years. We are currently in the town hall at Bowling Springs. Currently at Town Hall about four or five years ago, there was a big thing in the paper and everything with it. Um, they were trying to remodel the town hall. And Bowling Springs town decided that they were not going to keep that building. They've actually um, I think they've sold it to Gardner Webb, or they're going to sell it to Gardner Webb, they want that area. And the problem was they had a lot of mold and a lot of other problems to read up. I don't think with the economy the way it is, the towns move very quickly as far as getting a new place to go, but at some point in time they're going to have to, um, because they were not going to remodel the place that they were currently in. Currently housed the town hall, the police and us. So even if they do move, um, we've negotiated and they've gone through a couple of town managers down there since we started negotiations with back with David Deere. So it's been through quite a few um, years of people looking at it and seeing if they're going to include us into their location. We've done that with some of the other things like the Shelby Fire. We've gone in with their buildings and built with them. Um, and it would be a costly project for us no matter which way we did it, whether we go with the town hall or whatever. But the building that we're currently in, um, we get flooding in there quite often where the water and stuff is seeping in. We've got the mold in our areas and stuff. We go in and spray and paint and put septic pumps in there and stuff to try to clean it up. But it's not uncommon for them to have water and everything where we're at when we come into the base, especially if it's during the rainy season. So do we need it? Probably at some point in time in our future, yes, we will need a building. Would this make a good example? It's less than a mile, mile and a half from our current location. So it would be a good location. It's got large enough base, it's a plenty big enough building compared to what we have now. It would be very, very um, useful for any of that space. But you know, Joe, we've looked at the future of different locations for EMS. Correct. And I think what I heard was probably either one of these places is not worth two. We did. May, I may have misread it. You know, yeah. You're talking about the Ball Springs Rescue Base? I'm talking about the location of EMS in Bowling Springs to serve the public. Is either one of them worth the effort or the money to maintain or we need to go the Okay. Um, after I talked with my captains, we've had all of our supervisors in through this. I've had our maintenance people over there. I've had the building inspector over there. I've had Perry from EM over there. We've done a lot of walkthroughs with the Bowling Springs Rescue School. And to everybody that has gone through that place, they feel it's a block building. It's much like the law enforcement center is now. It's a building that is there. The property is big enough to support us and everything. The building is there. Internally, we have to change a few things and do some structure to it. But yes, it would be a suitable building for the size of that station that I have down Bowling Springs. If we were to stay where we're currently at in the old town hall, I think we're going to be running into some mismatch at some point in time. Because if I remember right, Went through several years of this. Gardner Webb wants that property. And the town hall is definitely moving out and building another structure whenever the economy gets better. So we may be left homeless if we didn't have something. Now, your question is do we want a new station down there? Well, 
New is always good, but I don't know if that's really necessary for Roland Springs if we take a building like this and just go ahead and refurbish it from the ground up. Starting with that, it costs us zero to start with. I may, put, I may put, like I said in here, we may put up to $50,000 to get it all repaired back up, but that's a building. I paid almost a half a million dollars for one to one King's Mountain. And make, may I make a comment? Okay, you're looking at the current tax value of the park itself, $133,000 just on the value. Okay, we've got $60,000 worth of equipment. We're looking at a $45,000 repair bill. That leaves us to the good about $170,000. And like uh, Joe said, the current building that we built for the base station King's Mountain was almost a half a million dollars. Now we've got a suitable location, something similar to what we've got in Waco, correct? Correct. That we went ahead and took an old building and, and redid it to provide the service because we don't need, we won't have the number of calls out of that that we would have in the King Mountain area due to the hospital location. But, you know, if you just look at the dollar and cents, even, the even in the hospital, you know, no, just looking at the dollar and cents portion of it, their charter, we take the building, if we take the building, we've got a $133,000 tax value building. Even if we don't spend the 45, we spend the 45 and upgrade it. Then it will be useful to us. So I, I think what Joe is saying that, that looking at the future of what we need up there in mean, close proximity to the one now, I think it would be a good idea to go ahead and accept the building and start looking and let the county manager work on something for next year's budget to make improvement to move the unit in it that we'll have plenty of time to clean down for the time.
as this uh, uh, continues to move forward over the next year. Very good discussion. Anything else? All right, we have a first and second on the floor. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Lord. Next item on the agenda is the uh, City of Shelby property swap. That will turn it over to our town manager. Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, in the staff report, provide <coughs> any uh, uh, documents that are also enclosed with that. What we have is a formal request from the City of Shelby uh, where they are asking uh, for consideration of a property swap. Five parcels that I'd like to cover with you uh, briefly and then certainly uh, answer any questions that you may have. The first three parcels uh, included in the City of Shelby's letter uh, several weeks back are three residential properties uh, all located in the City of Shelby. Uh, these three parcels are all three located in areas uh, where there have been continued challenges uh, with higher than normal crime for the city. Uh, a lot of the homes that are in these areas, uh, there have been uh, minimum housing code compliance issues, and these three pieces of residential property that, uh, that Cleveland County owns uh, currently, uh, the three, uh, according to our tax assessor's office, uh, reassessed value would be around $14,000. The size of the residential tracts are uh, nine one hundredths of an acre, eighteen one hundredths of an acre, and eleven one hundredths of an acre. And these are three modest residential homes. In speaking with tax assessor's office, uh, they were very supportive of these parcels being handed over to the city of Shelby. Uh, the city of Shelby does have an active uh, minimum housing code uh, office working closely with other city departments, and they would uh, work closely with property owners to try to pull these properties into uh, compliance. The two remaining parcels that I will talk to you about tonight are really the two pieces uh, that would be uh, swapped from the city over to the county. The city is asking for a 5.1 acre tract of property uh, that would be adjacent, uh, that the uh, Cleveland County owns that is adjacent to the west water tank near KSM Castings. Uh, located on the west side of Shelby. This property, uh, while it is at 5.1 acres, in looking and examining the piece of property, uh, about three of the five acres is within the uh, railway. And so there's only about two acres that are not, that are not, uh, it's not within the railway right of way. And so to say it's a five acre piece of property is a little bit of a misnomer, and it is adjacent to the water tank. I think the city's interest is to have uh, all property uh, right around the water tank so that the city is assured in the future uh, that they will be able to uh, control access to the water tank, access to the property adjacent to it to, to uh, assure that there is continued security in and around the water tank. And this uh, tank serves uh, KSM and is a key piece of continued success uh, with economic development in that area. In exchange for this piece of property, what the city is offering the county is three quarters of an acre here in town uh, that is um, strategically located across the street from our Board of Elections office. Uh, I think what Kerry has up in front of you right now is the, is the five acre parcel uh, that's located uh, out near KSM. And um, we can certainly answer any questions you may have on that. And a, in, in a piece of property in town, the three quarters of an acre of uh, land, vacant land, is uh, strategically located across from our Board of Elections office. And currently, this property is used for overflow parking uh, during especially heavy voter turnout times at the Board of Elections. And so uh, the city would be willing to formally deed that property over to the, uh, Cleveland County. Uh, Kerry Melton in our office has been working very closely with the DOT uh, to make sure that we would be able to, over time, get uh, uh, a pedestrian uh, mid-block crossing from that uh, 
current vacant piece of property over to the Board of Elections to where we can get uh, uh, folks coming in to vote safely across that street. We have gotten positive feedback from the DOT that that can happen, so I think we can bring that piece of property online in a more formal way and ensure that people can get to the Board of Elections safely. So basically, uh, that would help to serve us with our voter parking needs. Uh, I think the, the, uh, uh, the property swap back to the city would also help uh, their needs as it relates to their management of their water tank and their water infrastructure in that area of the city. And with that, uh, members of the board, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Commissioners, are there any questions on the uh, city of Shelby property swap for Captain Andrew? Second approved and a second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the uh, Bethlehem and Oak Grove Rural Fire Relief Fund. Um, they have, um, these two departments have um, uh, submitted names. Um, for us to appoint to their Environments Relief Fund for their respective um, agencies. Um, Jeff Cloninger for uh, Bethlehem, Moffitt Sism for Oak Grove, and um, my understanding on it, this is uh, the, the Environment Relief Fund uh, is for um, firefighters that are injured in line of duty, is it correct? Uh, actually, the purpose of this board is to take control of, um, it's actually funds, they're one half of one percent of the fire and lighting insurance premiums collected in a rated fire district. This board decides what to do with that money. Um, and, and the two members, there's not a term expiration on this, but as the, the departments were filling out their uh, updated forms, they realized that some of the folks serving on them had passed away. Um, so that's that's why I'm bringing that for you. Mr. Chairman, the comment is I know both, both individuals, and they have both worked their departments uh, in a, in a, in a very outstanding manner over all the years. They couldn't ask it too better. Any other comments? Make a motion to accept those two. Uh, motion to accept. Charles, well, second. And second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. All right, we're down to commissioner's reports. Uh, commissioner Holbrook, we'll start with you tonight. Uh, I guess. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'd just like to say one thing. Uh, as far as reports, uh, most of the rest of you cover a lot of the reports. Uh, uh, thank. I don't know whether it's been released publicly, I don't think it has, but uh, President Fulmer of the Cleveland Community College was selected as the outstanding president of the community college system, which is 58 community colleges across the state, and um, he was um, received that honor, and it's quite an honor really because it's very stiff competition, and I think that's a tribute to everybody that contributes it to community college level in so many different ways to make that program and that college go. And uh, I think the thing which trustees will probably have to acknowledge is there were probably a lot uh, of people competing for that and it was probably a right much of a level playing field until a $23 million grant was awarded. That sort of closed the deal, I believe. <laughs> so uh, we're very happy for Steve, though he deserves it. More than anything, he deserves it. It's a great honor for the college and the community, too. Yeah, the commissioner reminded me that uh, we have a carpentry class at the, at the college uh, as part of the curriculum. And uh, last trustee meeting came a uh, topic of discussion. Anybody needs a doghouse? That's a good place to buy one. <laughs> What they do with the doghouse, they take and cut the angle in there with just like a big house. And then they've done a bunch of them, so they put them on gov.com to sell them. And I think they're going about 20 bucks a piece. That's what it costs to do them. So get you a good doghouse in this cold weather. Uh, 
I had board health, met board health meeting, and uh, also the council and agent meeting today. Going to move teams is uh, I just want him to go. You know, the grants are getting cut back, the funding is not as much, so everybody's working for more money. Got the uh, our MPO meeting tomorrow. Um, the uh, Boys and Girls Club is going to have an announcement of, of, if you recall, a few months ago, the, there was a new um, RX card, um, Coast to Coast RX card. On the 29th at 11 o'clock over at the uh, Turning Point Academy in the gymnasium. And um, it's a, a card that they're promoting that's a discount card, a drug card, that uh, is going to be free to the community. And um, it's, going, it's not only for drugs for, um, um, that you get, well, it's a drug for the pharmacy, but it's, um, for, but it's also for um, veterinarian services, for eyes, dental, what else is on there, um, vision. And so it's, um, you'll, you'll be getting more information, but they, they, you can pick up the cards through the, at the, at the pharmacies, there'll be, uh, we'll have some at the county office building, so there'll be more information to come, but it's going to be announced on the, uh, um, the 29th at 11 o'clock at the Turning Point Academy if you'd like to come. So just be looking for more information for that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, what I was going to say is that uh, I would like to kind of uh, if the board will agree is a, a resolution honoring Dr. Homer for his recognition.
uh, for the work that y'all have done on the summary page um, for our agendas. Um, it's the, we talked about details with DCC. That is one detail that y'all have added on to our agenda that is going to make it not only easier for us to follow along with what we've got going on, but for the public as well. Um, our, when our agenda is put out there, that summary page is one of the things that's on there that's going to go through a lot more uh, details and, and reasoning behind some of the things that are going to be brought before the commissioners. So uh, appreciate all that work, and I know that you've got the department heads uh, working with that as well to, to help put that together. So thank you all for doing that. Thank you, Chairman. Also, thank you. We've got a new editor, too. Correct? Yeah. Correct. Something like that. Talk about it a little bit so we put it in the paper. Huh? You want to talk about it so we put it in the paper? I saw the story about that, but for the ones of you that didn't get to see the video of Ben or what is it called? Not blanking, it was. Um, LeBron. LeBron. Yeah. You need to see it. <laughs> it was unreal. It's. Uh, I, just, I can't explain it, so that's something that we, maybe we can get that and we can share it with the commissioners somehow, so I'll try to get that for some of them. Tell me about it, tell me about it. I will. I will. All right. There's no other business. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, 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 sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. Um, I think motion to recess and reconvene Tuesday, January 28th at what time is it? Five o'clock for a work session. Okay. Got a first and second for that. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think it's a good topic for you. Just a second.